Welcome back guys. Today we are looking all at ankle stability. So ankle stability can optimize performance and also decrease the risk of getting injuries. And it's not just injuries in the ankle, but injuries in the knee and the hip. As the ankle is the first point of contact in the ground, so if you're in, in an unstable sport, a sport that has quick and agile stops, starts, all those things, if we don't have control through the ankle, we're leaving an uneven platform or an unstable platform for the knee and the hip. So this program today, guys, you can complete this daily. If you notice that you have weaknesses in and around the ankle, this is gonna be great for you. Um, I hope I'm really helping you out with these programs and I hope you enjoy today. Let's get into it. Okay, guys, so to start off with here, we're just gonna do a nice warm up, really basic. I'm gonna do this side on so you can see. So just coming up onto the toes, rocking back onto the heels, lifting the feet. So just nice little rhythmic. If you've got a wall close by, it's normally better to hold onto a wall, just so you've got a bit of stability. But we're trying, just trying to get those calf muscles, the little tibialis anteriors on the front of the shin, everything around the ankle, just starting to fire a little bit. Get the blood flow down there. So we're not going in too cold into the hard exercises too soon. All right guys, so for exercise number one, we're using a Dura Disc. If you don't have a Dura Disc, you can use two cushions at home stacked on top of each other just to create a little bit of instability. What we're gonna do here as well is take our shoes off, yeah? Let those little muscles in and around the ankle fire a little bit more. The shoes often don't allow us to optimize the, uh, the full potential of the foot. Try and keep the foot as flat as possible. We don't want the foot always leaning into one side, so always try and bring it back to a flat, le flat level. From here, we're gonna stabilize 45 degrees flexion through the knee, little tap in front, Little tap behind, one minute, we are on. So keep, as, as the knee caves in, keep bringing it out. As the foot starts to sink into one side, make sure you keep bringing it back so the bottom of the foot stays flat. And you're gonna feel, you might even feel if you're really weak in and around the ankle that you start to feel like either the bottom of your foot starts to cramp or the little muscles around the ankle start to cramp, which this is just a sign of a little bit of weakness. So really slow with these taps, you might lose balance here and there. That's okay, just make sure you get back on, find the, uh... good, so we're gonna go other foot now. So we're gonna left foot on, I'll change sides so you can see from this side. So stabilize. 45 degrees through the knee, make sure the knee's not collapsing in. And we're on guys, let's go. All right guys, so for this next one, it's a little step up, but once again, we're using the Dura Disc. And remember, if you don't have the Dura Disc, two cushions stacked on top of each other, just to create a little instability. So we're gonna be on the Dura Disc, planting the pressure into the toes, into the heels. So doing this with the foot, or stabilizing on one leg. Now it's really important with this one, especially if your stability isn't the best, to try and hold a wall or something close by to make sure you don't topple over or hurt yourself. We'll start with the left side, 45 degrees, same setup as we previously were in, 45 degrees knees uh, flexion in the knee there. Trying to stabilize first, nice and upright through the torso, and then from here, pressure into the toes, then going back into the heels. 
into the toes, back into the heels. And once again, I don't have a wall or anything in front of me. I've done these ones quite a lot, so I'm pretty comfortable with them. But if you're a little unstable, have a wall in front of you or have a kitchen bench or something that you can grab onto and uh, that'll just give you that little extra bit of confidence. But as we, you can see here, and it's a very delicate small motion, we're trying to go up onto the toes, put pressure into the toes, and then going back onto the heels to go pressure into the heels. Okay, so changing sides now, guys. So once again, find the little center point, the sweet spot on the duty disc, all the cushions that you're using at home. 45 degrees of uh, flexing the knee, stabilize. Make sure everything's stacked over each other, and then let's go. Into the toes, into the heels. And you're gonna feel those legs should be starting to get pretty shaky around the ankle. Everything's really working in overdrive to try and stabilize the foot. It's also really important to note that as we do this, that little tripod foot or the, the flat foot that we were trying to keep in the first exercise, we try and maintain that through this one. So if you start to tip inwards or outwards, that we're always trying to find that, that our way back to being nice and flat. So we can keep that pressure even as we go into the toes and then back into the heels. Okay guys, so if you aren't familiar with this little device, it's an ankle slant box and it's for trying to create a little bit more dorsiflexion or flexion through the ankle. If you have one of these, that's amazing, great, it's gonna work really well. If not, don't worry, if you've got a step or off the side of a box or something like that, you can do the same thing. Okay guys, so for setup here, it's really important. So I'm gonna go both feet on. I always like, I'm gonna open the door here and be grabbing just around the side of the wall here, just so I don't sort of tip backwards here. Now what I want us to do to start off with is come up on both toes. Then once we're at the very top here, we're going to lift one leg and slowly drop down on a single leg, rocking the knee forward at the bottom, trying to create as much dorsiflexion as possible. Other foot comes on, coming up together with both, controlling down on the single. Rocking the knee forward, other foot comes on, up again. So control. Drop the knee forward, hold for three or four seconds. Other foot comes on, straighten the knees, up from there. Drop the knee forward. Okay, changing sides. So up, dropping down on the left side now. Rocking that knee forward, trying to create as much dorsiflexion. This side's actually a lot less than the other. Other foot comes on, up again with both. Slowly down over three or four seconds. Rock the knee forward, hold for three seconds. Other foot comes on, straight up from there. Rock the knee forward. Other foot comes on, and up from there. Alright guys, so for this next one, we have a resistance band. We're gonna loop it around, go through, make sure it's nice and securely attached. Now this is just a medium resistance band. If you haven't done much ankle work before, I suggest you use just a light cooped resistance band. Okay guys, so to get into this, what we're gonna do, our band goes through the ankle. We're gonna hoop, hook one of the uh, the top of the band around the, the foot like this. Here, wiggle the foot out, keep the knee nice and straight, curl the toes forward, and then here what we're trying to do is not shift the whole leg, keep the knee nice, pretty much still frozen, not moving whatsoever, and just with the bottom of the foot, almost like it's going, this part here is trying to face the inside, yeah? So we call it inversion of the foot, 
and it's a really small movement. You might need to really concentrate for the first few reps. But we're just controlling. And as you can see here, I've got the band hooked between the big toe and the, the second toe. And if this is easy, you can wiggle out a little bit, but just make sure it's all your ankle moving. We don't want that knee, we don't want the whole hip rotating inwards to help with this motion. I always say if people are struggling with this one, you can go the other foot next to it, and it's almost like you're trying to high five your other foot. So if you were going both in together, high five. All right, so changing sides. So once again, the whole foot goes through, crisscross, with that, the top of the crisscross between the big toe and the second toe. Coming up from there, keep both legs straight. I often like to bend this knee here. And remember, it's that high-fiving the other foot motion, yeah? So the bottoms of the foot high-fiving, trying to get that inversion motion through the ankle. So we're going 40 seconds here. If that's really easy for you, you can shuffle the foot out a little bit, and obviously, that's gonna make it harder. And yeah, as you can see there, as I release, my foot's shaking a little bit, which is good, but we want to try and iron those shakes out to make it nice and smooth and controlled. So just 40 seconds here, guys. Some people as well might find the, uh, the band between the toes might be a little irritating. Most people I do this with don't find it too irritating, can sometimes just be a little uncomfortable. But All right, so for the next one, guys, same thing. So foot goes through the band, we do the crisscross, and then the top of the crisscross now is gonna go between the little toe and the fourth toe. So the fourth and fifth toe, same thing, straight leg. This time, imagine you're, there's something on the outside and you're trying to high five your foot to the outside, yeah? So we're creating e version through the foot. So trying to turn it out. Generally, this motion, our bodies allow us to do a little less of, so we might be playing with, a, honestly, five or 10 degrees of movement here. But as long as you can start to get it moving, it's a really good one. And if you strengthen this one, guys, if you've had a lot of people before have had lateral ligament sprains, this is a great one to start to strengthen because as you guys probably already know, if you've sprained your lateral ligaments, they're always going to be a little weakened. So it's a great one to increase the strength through the, uh, those perineals on the side and all the tiny little stabilizer muscles that are going to protect those lateral ligaments of the ankle. And a good sign of this one, as you release, if it starts to shake a little bit towards the end of the 40 seconds, it means you're pushing yourself hard enough. All right, guys, so for the final side of E-version, remember, foot goes in the middle of the resistance band, crisscross, top goes between the little toe and the fourth toe, or the fourth and fifth toe, and then remember from here, trying to high-five the foot to the outside, so trying to get that E-version through the foot. So, squeezing out as far as possible. I've actually sprained my ligaments on this side of uh, the lateral ankle quite a lot. And there's always a little bit of weakness. So if, I'm, if, uh, if I've been surfing a lot, I always like to try and do this as a little warm up. Or just add it to the mix of uh, gym stuff I'm doing, just to ensure I've got that strength through there. And I'm not gonna get any of the uh, that sort of chronic ankle inflammation starting to come on. Yeah, same thing guys, 40 seconds here. You gotta really focus in, because it is such a uh, emotion that most of us don't often do. And with the added resistance, it makes it even harder to uh, for your brain to sort of register how to uh, evert the foot. Alright guys, so for this last one, what we are doing is setting up in a Bulgarian lunge position. We're going to go halfway down, and then from here, up onto the tippy toes, holding two, one, slowly drop down. Up again, so just holding this motion, trying to create a little bit more strength into plan flexion. Make sure you control that balance, and sometimes be a little shaky when you come up the top here. And we're just going here. For that 40, 
40 seconds again. So control it down. You're gonna be probably feel a little sh shaky as you come back down. Keep that stability, keep the posture solid. Alright guys, so we're going to change sides from there, shake the legs out for a second. This is it for today, so let's finish nice and strong, dropping down, and then let's go with that plantar flexion, coming up onto the foot, holding, slowly dropping down. So once again guys, 40 seconds. If you need a little rest, feel free to drop down, have a little rest. We want to be able to, over the few next few weeks, try and build so we can get this whole program done and it shouldn't be too hard. It might be a little shaky here and there, but it shouldn't be too hard. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the ankle stability program today. If this is your first time doing ankle stability, you're probably going to be a little shaky, stiff, sore through the ankles. Um, there shouldn't be any pain, it should just be that muscular post-workout stiffness, domsy feeling that you often get after using a muscle you haven't used before. So, over the next few weeks, I hope this really starts to kick in. Whether you're an athlete, just an everyday person trying to improving your body functions. Um, I hope it's really beneficial for you guys. Remember to like, subscribe, all that stuff guys. It really helps me keep these videos coming for you guys. So until next time guys, take care, keep the bodies healthy and I will see you guys soon.